in this problem, we observe a rotating mass in the initial state, and it has to be held in place with a tension in order to supply the centripetal force, and that's called T1. And then we're going to pull on that string harder and harder and harder, and it's going to shrink the radius for the uniform circular motion for this object. And it's going to take a bigger force to hold it in place, and that's called T2. And we actually compute those in part C. That's really a review question of some older dynamics ideas. The main part of this problem is really conservation of angular momentum. And the reason why angular momentum is conserved is that that string force is only pulling radially on this mass, which means it cannot exert any torque. So there it is in both cases. It's pulling exactly radially, and a force that pulls radially has no perpendicular component to exert torque. With no net torque being exerted, it means the angular momentum is conserved. I wanted to get some things out of the paragraph here for our initial state. The mass of our block is 0.5 kilograms. Our initial rotation rate is one rotation per second, but I'd rather write that in radians per second. One rotation is two pi radians. And the initial radius for this rotation is 40 centimeters or 0.4 meters. I also wanted to put another reminder up over here, I suppose. The moment of inertia of a point mass is just going to be mr squared. So let's get started on part A. We want the final angular speed in rotations per second and radians per second. So angular momentum is conserved. Angular momentum is given by moment of inertia times angular velocity. My initial moment of inertia, I take the mass of this thing times the initial radius squared, omega initial. My final moment of inertia, mass, times final radius squared, omega final. And it turns out the mass does not matter. What I'm after here is omega final. And I just have to plug stuff in now. So my initial radius was 0.4. My final radius is still hiding up here in the paragraph. It's 10 centimeters, so 0.1 squared, times omega initial, which I suppose I'll go back to the rotations per second version, since that's the first thing I was asked for. And notice that it's OK to work in these non-standard units. My omega final is just going to pop out in rotations per second. So when I crunch the numbers, I get 16 rotations per second. If I multiply by 2 pi, I get radians per second. And that's 100.5 radians per second. In part B, we're asked to compute the work done by tension. And my intent here is to use sort of a clever energy approach to it. I can write down the kinetic energy in the initial state and the kinetic energy in the final state, and therefore infer how much work has been done. So I'm not talking about a direct calculation of force through distance. And the reason why is that this tension is changing. So I'd have a non-trivial work integral to do. I'm trying to avoid that by just looking at the kinetic energy. So because this is a point mass, I could write my initial kinetic energy as 1 half mv squared. I would have to find v from r times omega. Or I can just look at it as a rotational dynamics problem. Say it's 1 half i omega squared. And I'll point out real quick that I get exactly the same expression. So I is going to be m r initial squared, and then omega initial squared. Notice what I'm looking at right here is r times omega squared. Well, that's just v squared. So it really is the same thing as 1 half mv squared. So I end up with 1 half times the mass, which is 0.5 kilograms, times the initial radius squared. Initial angular velocity squared, and you have to be in radians per second for this. So putting that in radians per second. And I get 1.58 joules out of this. In my final state, 1 half i omega squared. That's 1 half m r final squared, omega final squared. So 1 half times 0 0.5 times 0.1 squared omega final squared that's 100.5 radians per second all squared and i get 25 
0.25 joules for this. Taking the difference and invoking the work energy theorem, if you want to be formal about it, how much work was done, you just look at how much the kinetic energy increased. I get 23.7 joules of work. All right, so there's our conservation of angular momentum combined with energy problem. Um, I tacked on a review question here to actually compute T1 and T2. And you know, my main motivation there was just to, to highlight the fact that the tension is changing and therefore taking the work energy approach gets us around having to do an integral. It still might be a fun integral to do, but I'm not going to do it in this video. And this is just a real quick uniform circular motion problem. So T1 is the same as the tension in the string where it attaches to the mass. And that tension is supplying the entire centripetal force. So I'm, I'm just thinking F equals MA. What's my net force in that radial direction? It's T1. And it's got to be equal to M times A. And A is V squared over R if you want to write it that way. But that's the same as R omega squared, which is more convenient here. So I get 0 0.5 times 0 0.4 times omega initial squared, so 2 pi all squared, which gives me 7.90 newtons. And then T2 is mR omega squared for the final state. That's 0 0.5 times 0 0.1 times 100.5 radians per second all squared. And that gives me 505 newtons.